Welcome to Take 10 with the Tennessee Tribune. I'm Sandra Long Weaver, I'm Editorial Director, and we're having a discussion today about celebrities visiting with President-elect Trump. And it's the day before the inauguration. Our, our discussion is among students from Tennessee State University who are members of the debate and speech team. And I'd like to introduce their coach, Sean Allen, who will introduce the students. Hi, I'm, the, I'm Sean Allen, the new Director of Forensics at Tennessee State University. Right now we have four of our students with us, and I'm sure we've all seen the uh, TI Facebook video rant about if um, minority celebrities should be meeting with Donald Trump or not. So first I'm going to allow the students to introduce themselves, and then I'm going to let you guys hear what they have to say about the issue. Uh, how you doing? My name is Elijah McNutt. I am a junior at Tennessee State. Uh, I'm from Chicago, Illinois, and I'm majoring in criminal justice. Hi, I'm Janet Jordan. I'm a senior political science major, and I'm also from Chicago. My name is Jasmine Jester. I am a junior from Columbus, Ohio, majoring in psychology and minoring in African studies. Hello, I am Ashanti Holland. I am a sophomore, and my major is social work. So my stance on the whole video that T.I. made about Steve Harvey and Kanye West visiting with Trump, um, I basically feel like in any election, it's important for us to have our own opinions and our own stance on things. And um, if we have this issue within our society about the President of the United States, I feel like it's important to have that dialogue with him because ultimately when you get someone's ear, you have the power. You have the power for them to either listen or walk away. And if we have questions, it's important to have that conversation with him. And so I don't think it's wrong. Um, if they have those wrong intentions or ill intentions, and that's just on them. But as far as individuals from minority communities coming and talking to Trump, I don't see anything wrong with that. It's a great way to establish what he has, what's his intention to get questions answered so mm. I honestly don't think it's wrong it's important to talk to people from different political parties to understand different ideologies and way of thinking so I don't think anything is wrong with Steve Harvey nor Kanye West meeting with Donald Trump maybe those particular people probably cause a little ruffles but individuals from those um, social groups speaking with um, Donald Trump it's important that we have that dialogue with other people to understand what their intentions are So from what Janet said, I think I'm more so on the other end of that because like she said, the people that he invited made ruffles and feathers and I feel like the people that he invited was kind of a joke to be honest. I feel like that meeting should not be held with him unless he were to invite credible people from our community. Um, as far as what he said about John Lewis, I just feel like that, that again just shows how he feels about our community because I feel like he would be a great person um, to meet with with him first coming into office if he really truly wants to see how the black community is, what we're going through, what we need to do to achieve where we're trying to go. I feel like with the people that he invited, it shows that he really still does not care. And I would like to leave with this quote because I just feel like this really embodies what I'm trying to say. So this is a Malcolm X quote and it says, the same white man knowing that your eyes are wide open will send another Negro to the community telling you to support him so we can use them to lead us astray. The first thing he does when he comes to power, he takes all Negro leaders and invites them for coffee to show that he's alright. And these people can't pass up the coffee. They come away from the coffee table telling you and me that the man is alright. And I feel that's exactly what he did. Well, my stance on it, you know, I agree with um, Janet, like um, sitting down with the president, because um, at this point, I mean, there's nothing really much that we can do. He's already in, in office, so I don't think that we should pray on his downfall. I feel like we should upli um, uplift him because he is our leader. So if he fails, then we all fail. Yeah. So I just feel like sitting down with him, that's okay, you know, just seeing his point of view, being able to read him and see what kind of person he really is, aside from social media or what, you know, you know, the media portrays or the news portray about him? Uh, uh, they brought up great points. Uh, and I feel that uh, them going to meet with Trump and going to uh, having a conversation is a great way to start uh, start us off into uh, getting issues taken care of in the black community that, that we have. There's 
a, a many issues that uh, that they could have talked about, or and we don't know the exact extent of what the conversation was about, mm -hmm. and that's what really kind of scares us because they all come out smiling, shaking hands, taking pictures, but we don't. The only thing we could see is what, uh, or, or we can just place our feelings on that conversation without even actually knowing what happened. So if Steve Harvey came out on his show uh, and said, "Oh, I talked to Trump about this," or "I talked to Trump about that," and Trump told me this, and this is the way that we're going to go. Uh, but we don't have that right now. So I think that's what, that was really scaring everybody and was putting everybody to a, uh, <clears throat> uh, excuse me, a uh, stance of, oh, we're not standing with Trump or we're not standing with Steve Harvey or the other athletes or other black celebrities that went, went with them because we don't know what happened. The only thing we know is they had a meeting and they had coffee or something or whatever happened with that. So I think that's what's scaring us. And if I could just chime in again, um, to comment on Jasmine's poem and also a little things that you said, um, that's part of the problem in society. We don't have our own, well, I won't speak in general, but a lot of people in different like ethnic groups, we don't have our own political understandings or stance. We go off of what the media tells us. Like, how much of what you know about the, the people that ran for presidency was filtered through social media, which is, how much is factual? Mm -hmm. Like, we need to do our own research on candidates, on political people, at the state level, at the government level, and just make our moves based off what we know for ourselves. We can't be puppets. We can't go off of what Kanye West said or what Steve Harvey said. We have to have an understanding of those individuals in power for ourselves and make our judgments that way. Um, and so everybody's entitled to their own opinion and their own feelings towards people in power, but it's important that you usher that feeling based off facts, not off of what media outlets tell you to believe, not off of what celebrities tell you to believe or celebrities tell you to feel. Um, and that highlights a social issue as well because we need to become more educated on politics and issues and people in power for ourselves. And to piggyback off what she said, we um, I always say that we need to build up our community. Mm -hmm. We need to work, you know, we need to work on ourselves before we can change mm -hmm. the world. So I feel as in, you know, the African American community, yeah, we're not politi politically aware about, you know, most times on what's going on and then we teach our children that. So I feel like we need to build up our community and then once we get that together, we can work on everything else. Everything else will fall into place. I completely agree with that. Mm -hmm. I feel like now that, like Ashanti has said earlier, he's in office, so there's nothing that we can do about this now. But I feel like whether he's a great president or whether he puts us through tests, I feel like black people always, over, or min minority groups, always overcome obstacles that are put before them. So I feel like you don't have to look at this as something negative. We can look at this as a time for us to come together, as cliche as that does sound, I feel like when things like this happen, black people are the strongest. So while, you know, some people say don't meet with him, some people say meet with him, those are all point of views that we need to have so that we can move on to something greater because there's we need more than one way to get to where we're going. We can't just take one path. Mm -hmm. We need the people who are who are going to be completely against Donald Trump. We need the people who are going to at least be cordial with him. Like we need the people who are willing to go out into other communities and we need people who are going to stay in our communities who don't want to venture out. It's just all of those things are needed to help us get to where we're going. Yeah, uh, another thing is um, we're looking to Washington uh, and the presidency for the, the help for them to come and help our communities. Uh, uh, where we could go is starting off within our communities, building our communities, staying strong and building that foundation. So when we do get help, if it does come from Trump or the next president, um, we're already strong enough to know that, okay, this help is going to help us here and this is where we're going to take our group uh, to the next level from the help that we receive from them. But receiving help from Washington already on the on a scale that's, that we're already rocky and we're already not fully uh, functioning where we can to uh, operate for our full community to rise and not just some of us. So that's, I, I feel that if we work, work, working better with ourselves before we look out to Trump and look out to, um, or the other, other leaders who aren't actually in our communities every day. So as long as we're working in the communities uh, each day and, and trying to prosper, then we can look for that extra help. So.
Well, just to bring it back to T.I., I mm -hmm. don't think it was a rant as much as it was like a call to order. Because I agree with a lot of the things that he said in the video, that if you are going to meet with Donald Trump, have a strategy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, have something. Don't just go to see what he has to say. Have your points ready. Have what you have to do ready. And another thing I feel like what made people uncomfortable is Steve Harvey came out of the interview like, we have we have some great things planned. It's just like... Can we get a little bit more? Mm -hmm. Like, if you're going to speak on our behalf and tell him our issues, you should come out with something more to say than we have some great things planned. Mm -hmm. Like, you should, if there's a community for you to be open with, it's your own community. I don't feel like you should have secrets or you should keep things so private with someone who we don't even trust. Mm -hmm. And we send you in there for us, you should be able to come back and tell us something more than just a sentence. Do you guys agree with T.I.'s comments that if we are going to go in and have these meetings that we should take somebody in um, to kind of counsel us through the meeting with them? I agree with that. I think that's fair to say mm -hmm. um, because it's important to, like he said, if there is a hidden agenda that Trump has, mm -hmm. um, it is important that we're armed and ready, you know, but... So, I uh, yeah, and even if we don't have, you know, what was it, John Lewis? John Lewis yeah. Even if we don't have a John Lewis to come in and talk with us and help us through the conversation, it is important that we have, you know, some type of, I don't want to say armor, but we ha we're, 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 we're prepared for the conversation um, because that is the leader of this country. And so if there is this hidden agenda or, or anything like that, it is important that we're properly prepared to have an intellectual conversation with him and we're just not going in there, you know, just off the top of our head because we want answers, we want issues addressed. And so to be properly prepared is fair to say, yeah. And with that hidden agenda, we're not going to know exactly what the hidden agenda is just by them going. They're not going to go over there and find out the hidden agenda. But what they're going to do, what we're trying to have them to do is use their platform to understand uh, and, and uh, bring us something back that we can use to like, okay, this is what... Um, Steve Harvey, uh, uh, Kanye West got from Trump. So this is what we know that we can stand on in our community that we know that we can look forward to for the, the next four years. Right. I agree with that. And they go, oh, no, go ahead. Oh, and that goes back, back to just educating ourselves and educating mm -hmm. our, the future generations for what's to come. You know? That's what I was going to say. You have to have people like John Lewis. You have to have people like Al Sharpton who have lived through things like that because if you notice, history repeats itself, mm -hmm. and I feel like history is repeating itself. So you need people who have been through those times to coach you and to tell you exactly how they got things done. Mm -hmm. So with the new leaders and the new black faces of the community who are going to be the forefront of the new movements, why not go back in history? If, they're, if we're lucky enough for them to still be alive, why not go to them and say, hey, how did you do this? Even if you're not going to sit with me in the meeting, I'm the new face of this movement. So please tell me what you did to change history. Mm -hmm. And we also need people like T.I. to keep us keep those other leaders on their P's and Q's, letting them know mm -hmm. if they do feel like it's another agenda coming uh, and they're trying to use that for their own personal gain, uh, uh, we need people like T.I. letting them know that ain't right and that's not what you should be doing and this is your agenda right here because of the platform you have. So, Thank you for joining us. We hope you enjoyed this discussion with the members of the Tennessee State University's de speech and debate team. Uh, who are with us today. Thank you all for participating in this discussion, which I think adds to the dialogue that the country is having. And we'll see you the next time with Take 10.